Hello, my name is Neil and welcome to today's episode of Retro For You. And on today's episode, we're back on this here, the Amiga 2000. Now we started this last week and we discovered the socket was bad. What the plan is, number one, remove this bad socket. Number two, check the traces. Number three, insert the new socket, sold it all into place. And number four, refit the CPU and test the board. Oh, hopefully it's going to work. But who knows, this is retro for you. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video as always. And on that note, let's crack on. Before we have a quick word about our sponsor, PCB Way, I'd just like to mention their great Christmas offers they have on at the moment. All the way up to December the 31st, there is up to 50% off in big sales. There is also 10% off 3D printing and 20% off the starting price. Also, there's free upgrades on your PCBs. You can have purple, matte black and pink soda mask for free. How amazing is that? And that's not only all. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, as you can see here, there is $435 of coupon. These are limited quantity coupons, so it's on a first come, first serve basis. So make sure you go along and you click that link now. If like me, you like building things, then make sure you pop along to PCB Way. They produce high quality custom PCBs, perfect for replacement boards, prototypes, or even your own retro products. So once you've got your project you want to build, all you've got to do is simply click add to cart, which is big green button on the right hand side. Once you've done that, you're presented with this new page here. Now it'll say here, we have detected two layer board at 45 by 51, etc. Depending on what board you got, obviously that changes. And as long as it says here, 100% success, you're all good to go. Now there is a hyperlink at the top here for simple tutorial, which will give you some more information should you get lost. Now we do have some options we do need to set. The first one being, make sure you have the right country selected for your shipping costs. So you can make sure you're paying the right amount of postage to get it to your country. Now you've got the quantity here, which is always set to five, which is great because you've always got spares if things do actually go wrong on your build. Now also a couple of options down below, which are worth looking at is here, which is your solar the mask color and also your silt screen color so your solder mask color is the color of the board the silt screen color is the color of the words on the board and last but not least down the bottom here you can have assembly service if you want to get this board built after you've done this you click the button here save to cart it will then be processed as you can see the color of boards is absolutely excellent and the quality is second to none. Great job, PCB way. So whether you're into repairing a retro classic or just building something brand new, PCB way is the way to go. So check out the link down below. And on that note, let's crack on. Okay, so the plan is now to get this socket removed. How I'm gonna go about this to try to do as least damage possible is to do it in some steps. First step is, of course, to apply some flux. Then the next step will be to apply some lower melt soda to each of the joints, causing a mixture to cause it to have a lower melting point. What we're going to do after that is we're going to get the desoldering gun and we're going to try to remove as much soda from each pin as possible. After that, I'm going to get my little screwdriver and I'm going to go across each pin and I'm going to just check each pin is loose in its hole. Then finally, I'm going to flip the board over Get the heat gun on the underneath, gradually warm the board up while pulling the socket and hopefully it should be free then and come out with no damage. Well, that's the plan anyway, but let's just see. Sit back, enjoy the montage of me doing this and let's see how we get on at the end.
lovely. I'm quite happy with that. Jobs are good. And let's see if we can get that CPU in that socket. Oh, look at that. Straight in. Is that in now? Feels like I have a loose. Oops. I think that's in now. Yeah, that is a very tight fit. Okay, so moment of truth. I've connected the power supply here, as you can see. I've even put in the diagram, so it's ready to boot to diagram, hopefully. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn it on, we're going to see what screen output we get. Should be flashing colours, and we've got a signal, but we don't seem to have anything else. It just seems to be a black screen. So it looks like we need to do further work on this. So I think the next point of call is we'll get it onto the bench and we'll get the oscilloscope powered on. So we'll actually have a probe around and check out the clock signal and the reset line, etc. The next morning. It's another day in the shed. It's actually throwing it down. If you remember yesterday when we powered it on, all we got was a blank screen. So what I have done is I've taken a thermal image of this. You can see here and you can see that Gary and the memory is not running at all. Common sense means if Gary isn't running, the memory won't run. So I'm not going to say the memory is faulty at this precise moment. So first we're going to check pin 15, which should be the clock signal. Now I've already got the probe on there and connected up. We're just going to turn this on and see what we get. So you can see there we've got a nice square clock signal at 7.14 megahertz, which is absolutely correct and which it should be running at so that clock signal is good which means at least the computer is trying to start well i hope it is anyway let's just turn that off next because next we want to check the reset signal so the reset signal is on pin 18 so i need to move three pins up so 16 17 18 so it should stay low and go high once we turn it on let's just have a quick look and that is exactly what it did. Should we just try that again? You can see it's low. And as I turn it on, it goes high. So that again is another good thing. But we've still got a blank screen. I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ping out the traces again. Just in case I've missed something. Although AmigaPCB.org is amazing. They don't actually have the layout for the Amiga 2000. But what I was advised by my good friend Thomas was to use this program called Sprint. Download the lay files from the reproduction A2000 board and you can basically use this like you do Amiga PCB. Now all you've got to do is to load your lay file in and then click this little test button here. As soon as you've clicked that, you can then proceed to click on each pin and it'll show you where it runs through the board, which is absolutely excellent and makes his job a lot easier six and a half hours later I was almost at the end and guess what I've got a dead connection here now this one here if you can see on the screen should go to pin 3 here and it's not it's dead and just go back this way which it should to this socket here which is the CPU socket but it doesn't come this way now this does go to here and then to here like it does so there's obviously a break between here and that pin there so what i'm going to do i'm just going to turn that over and we'll just put a patch wire between pin two and that point there and then we'll be ready to retake so now from pin two here to this pin here we should have continuity which we do have but which we didn't have a minute ago so hopefully now that should be down to here which it is and it should still go back to pin two 
which it does. So that to me is fixed now. We're gonna give this another test now we've done that jumper wire underneath and hopefully it's gonna work. But let's just see, let's turn it on and see if there's any difference at all. So we've got a signal. Oh, now we've got a green screen. Now that to me means it's actually running a bit better. Green screen is faulty memory. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna have a look around here because I know these two here are the data lines to the memory and just see if there's any other damage anywhere. So I'm just gonna ping that back and I jump back to you if I find anything wrong. I've been pinging these out and lo and behold, I found another break. Now I've just repaired this one here, as you can see, there was a little jumper wire between the two here. So I'll clean that trap back and then I soldered to this wire here with a little bit of Kynar wire, if you can see that. Now that now has continuity. I was just checking the rest of them and I found another one down here. Now this is where I need to try and get another jumper wire across from here to this wire here. I'll probably go from here because that seems a bit loose. So I'm just going to carry on cleaning that up and we shall hopefully just put a little jumper wire across and then we should be ready to retest yet again. Okay, so moment of truth, we're about to test this again now. I've done this repair around here. Let's just turn that on now and see what happens. See if we've got any difference. Now we've got a black screen. We've got a flashing screen. We've got, that looks promising guys. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, look at that. It's booting diagram. Amazing. We fetched this 2000 back to life. Now, I'm going to leave my video there now because I've been at this all weekend trying to fix this, scoping out lines, etc. But I'm very happy to leave it in this place where it's actually booting diagram. Now, we still need to test the keyboard, etc. But we'll do that next time. We'll get it back into its case. I'll get some UV mask over this and get it cleaned up, etc. in the week. And... Next week we'll get that hard drive tested and we'll power it on in its case and see how it looks. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button please, it always helps the channel. And everybody please hit the like button and comment down below even if it's hello. Now don't forget to check out my Discord down below, there's also a link to my email address which is neil at retroforyou.co.uk should you wish to reach out to me for anything. I do get quite a few emails, surprisingly, which is great. I do like receiving emails. And on that note, I shall see you next time on Retro For You. This A2000 is now going. I'm really happy with that. See you soon, guys. Bye.